You know, they may have done everything right to protect themselves. The question is, who was there to protect them? That is the question the family of Marie Varsos and Debbie Sisko have asked for nearly a year after their deaths. Marie's estranged husband killed the mother and daughter before killing himself. Now, News Channel 5 investigative reporter Levi Ismail has the story of why some say they could have and Levi really should have these deaths been prevented. You know, it's hard for the family of Marie and Debbie to find even one thing that went right. Every step of the way for over a month, Sean Varsos continued to slip through the cracks. What happened next left three people dead and many more with questions. A warning, what you're about to hear may at times be graphic. They say you never truly know what someone is capable of. Wilson County 911, where is your emergency? Until they show you. Uh, 1412 Whispering Oaks Drive on Whispering Oaks in Stonebridge. There's a man trying to shoot a woman with a shotgun. Alex Yon always worried for his sister, so telling this story nearly a year later. I can, but it is very emotional for me. Still takes its toll. And so I might have to stop. You know, that morning, I was getting ready to get my day started. I picked up my phone, noticed that there was a push notification from Facebook from Sean. I clicked into it and I started reading the first couple of lines. And I quickly realized that this was a suicide note. On April 12, 2021, Sean Varsos drove to his mother-in-law's home here in Lebanon. For 45 minutes, he waited outside for the first sign of his estranged wife, Marie, and her mother, Debbie, before the unthinkable. I called my mother once, twice, three times, a fourth time. Marie and Debbie were in a fight for their lives. Marie, armed with a gun, shot Sean multiple times while on the phone with dispatch, when suddenly... Ma'am. Ma'am. The line went silent. Ma'am? She's not talking anymore. Called my mother's boyfriend, eventually connect with him. And I said, is everything okay? He goes, no, it's not okay. Three people are dead after a murder-suicide in Lebanon. Levi Ismail has more this morning from the scene. I hung up the phone and I was alone here and I just screamed to the world. I, I, I don't know what more anyone could have done to protect themselves. It's not so much a question for Alex as it has been a call to action. But first, to understand how we got here, you start one month earlier on March 7th, 2021. You actually don't have a right. I, I do actually have a right to do that. Marie had just filed for divorce and went back home to pick up her things. Sean was waiting. Marie was recording. I don't, you aren't letting me in our house. Stop. Fine, come on. Come on. Come I'm on. calling the cops still. No, you're not. I probably called Marie maybe three to four times. Wasn't able to get a response, and eventually she picks up. Marie explained that Sean had strangled her until she was unconscious. When she came to, Sean held her at gunpoint for hours before letting her go. Sean mentioned to Marie that if she told any law enforcement or talked to anyone at all, that he would kill her, kill us, and kill himself. Alex and Marie went to Metro Nashville Police that same night to file a report. Now, for the next six hours, they waited for any officer. I need to file a police report. Yeah, there's just out. nobody in the precinct right now. Um, so what's going to happen is a patrol car is going to have to free I've up. I've seen six officers since we've been out here drive by. Only one. We were frustrated. We were upset. We were very confused. When police finally arrived, Sean was nowhere to be found. They charged him with felony aggravated assault and misdemeanor false imprisonment. Fearing for her life, Marie filed this order of protection. There was just one problem. It would take several more hours for the warrants to show up on Sean's record. Um, when the background check was ran, it did not indicate that he had anything active against him. So when Davidson County Sheriff's deputies called Sean, Shirley Bean says he agreed to be served this order at the sheriff's office. He walked in, grabbed his papers, and walked out, despite two warrants for his arrest. And I hate to see to put another victim in, you know, that particular, you know, spot. But that's the that's 
That's the law. Nashville is one of few places where the sheriff's office does not arrest criminals. They mainly handle civil cases. The police department handles the criminal side of things, but there's no policy that says these two have to coordinate. It, it, it is as simple as a phone call, but also we can't detain anybody. Not knowing where he was, not knowing what his next steps were. It wasn't until Marie tracked Sean down at his mother's home and told police that they arrested him two days later. We were never notified that he was arrested. We were never notified of his release. Once again, more setbacks. Sean could have been placed on GPS tracking by the judge, but county officials told us that's rarely, if ever, used in cases of domestic violence, at least in Davidson County. Making matters worse, Sean's bail release form, which said he was not to have any contact with Marie, also waived the mandatory 12-hour hold typical for domestic violence cases. And that allows the victim to go back to the residents to get their belongings, to get anything else they need. No one can seem to explain the mistake, but we learned the person who processed this document was suspended for one day as a result. Part of the reason is that without the 12-hour hold in the right place, no one entered Marie into the system that notifies victims of updates. Instead, she called day after day. I wanted to make sure my contact info was correct because um, both times when he was served with order protection and when he was arrested, I never got a notification. It wasn't just one thing. It wasn't just two things. I can't think of one thing that actually went right. For a woman who, from all indications, did everything right, she may not be here now, but Alex knows we're more than capable of the change that saves lives. Ma'am, ma'am, she's not talking anymore.